cartoonist Robert Graysmith became famous with the publication of his 1986 book Zodiac, the sequel Zodiac Unmasked, and the new film adaptation by director David Fincher. This is the Zodiac speaking. I am now in control of all things. Graysmith's books presented a largely fictional account of the unsolved Zodiac crimes and helped perpetuate many myths surrounding the notorious mystery. In more than two decades of television interviews, Graysmith told his version of the story while presenting himself as a devoted journalist in search of the facts. I set out to write a book that took me 10 years to write uh, to learn everything we could about uh, the Zodiac killer. Graysmith believed he had identified the Zodiac. There are a lot of strange uh, theories and things, but it fits one man, it fits one man only. The prime suspect in the case, the man who actually was the, the first suspect who knew all the victims, who stalked them, who had the skills and intelligence to write the letters and to commit the crimes. To use the symbol, to wear that watch with a cross circle on it, and, uh, and to be at the crime scenes and to know the victims, he would have to be. Zodiac. So, you know, you look at those little things and you begin to add this up, you begin to add this up, you begin to add this up, you get a, a, a pretty good case. The author's case against his prime suspect was a combination of fact and fiction. I'm not the Zodiac killer. I know that. I, I know that deep in my soul. Thank God for our Constitution, because that says a person is innocent until proven guilty. Allen was once a suspect in the early 1970s, but police were unable to find any evidence to link him to the Zodiac crimes. Just point blank, are you a murderer? No. Are you the Zodiac killer? No, definitely not. I couldn't murder anyone. Despite his denials, Allen remained haunted by the accusations. How do you live with this? It's difficult as hell, and it can be. Ex it can be terribly depressing. And if I deserved any of it, that would be something different. But I don't. Michael Finney, Channel 7 News tonight. Arthur Lee Allen died under a cloud of eternal suspicion. Well, if, if I die, that'll that, that'll cure it for me. Yet the accusations did not die with the prime suspect, and Robert Graysmith later released a sequel titled Zodiac Unmasked. The book closed the case and named Allen as the killer. Graysmith faced the possibility that DNA and other evidence could exonerate his suspect, but the author was not discouraged. Will you believe that he is not the Zodiac? No, probably not. I think he's involved. I've never been known for good luck. Allen's luck changed when police examined the evidence and made an important announcement. This is a photograph of the so-called exorcist letter from the Zodiac, showing what investigators almost 30 years ago say they found on that letter, a writer's palm print. To my understanding, the palm print that was yielded by the chemical analysis of this letter um, was compared with a negative result to, um, to Arthur Lee Allen. Once again, the evidence failed to implicate Allen. In addition to fingerprint and palm print comparisons that appeared to exclude him as a suspect, many experts had also concluded that Allen did not write the Zodiac letters including Sherwood Morrill and a forensic documents examiner hired by the television show America's Most Wanted. Now this handwriting sample from Arthur Lee Allen is a nice full page of writing. And my conclusion is quite simple. It's not the guy. Even DNA seemed to support Allen's claims of innocence. I found a partial DNA fingerprint from a male individual who at some time has had contact with the stamp. Arthur Lee Allen could not have contributed the DNA that I detected on the stamp. 
Arthur Lee Allen, the focus of 30 years of research and a mountain of circumstantial evidence, exonerated by science. I'm not the damn Zodiac. Despite the evidence that appeared to exonerate his prime suspect, Robert Graysmith continued in his efforts to convince the public of Allen's guilt, and the media accepted the author's version of the story as fact. I realized the police departments of the different counties were not sharing. So as a private citizen, I realized I could go places they couldn't and get information. For 10 years, I compiled it into a book that so people would remember this case. And that book made a difference, and that book is still helping keep this story alive. Police really look at you as an asset. Boys, I'm going to tell you something. He's the man that's most responsible for keeping this whole story alive. He'll print anything as long as it keeps people's tongues wagging. But I hear the people who made the film Zodiac took accuracy to a whole new level. Astounding levels. In making this film, director David Fincher, who also directed Seven and Panic Room, wanted to keep it as factually based as possible. Fincher told Graysmith, I am interested in an impression. We need to construct Zodiac from its emotional truth as opposed to its factual truth. The press packet for the film quoted Fincher as saying, The one thing about the Zodiac story, too, is there are so many people out there who are convinced Robert is wrong about some things and that their version or interpretation is right. And there are so many myths that sprang up. That is why we chose to tell the story the way we did, through Robert's eyes. My goal was to capture the truth of those books. Fincher further explained, The guy gets a lot of flack to this day about the conclusions that he drew and some of the evidence that he has and how it was obtained or whatever, but the fact of the matter is, he does have a really pretty profound understanding of what happened. Fincher failed to mention that Graysmith's profound understanding of the story had also led to a serious and very profound misunderstanding concerning the facts in the case. I'm not the Zodiac, and if I was, I certainly wouldn't tell you. In six days, boys go around helping people in the night. The Zodiac, when I'm done with them, they don't need much help, is coming. Zodiac, rated R, in theaters March 2nd.